Going the distance with local sports. Loretto Mustangs. Summertown Eagles. Lawrence County Wildcats. This is the X Sports Network. Welcome to the pregame show, getting you ready for all the games going down in week four of the high school football season here in Southern Middle Tennessee. Starting first right here at Hendrick Stack Stadium, where the Cowbell rivalry will be renewed as Giles County makes its way to take on the Wildcats of Lawrence County. Lawrence County is riding high after its region opening win at Lincoln County last Friday. Feeling good. You know, a uh, big difference from uh, last week to this week. So really proud of our guys bouncing, bouncing back. And we had a great week of practice. And uh, like you said, big region win. And, you know, that's a place with a lot of history. The pit over there. And they've had, I believe, three state championships at the highest level. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're a proud and storied program to go over there and get a win. It's a big deal for us. The offense got going, putting up almost 500 yards of total offense. Blocking was great. That's, that was the reason why we uh, got so many yards and why we ran the ball so well is blocking. And we're going to keep uh, continue, keep doing what we do, run the ball. Next, an old rival will come to town in the form of Giles County. We've seen them last two years jamboree, uh, but first time for, for a regular season game. We're excited about that. Uh, our kids haven't had a chance to play in a cowbell game, so they're, they're excited and our student body's excited, looking for a, a good night Friday night. This will be this crop of Wildcats' first experience with the cowbell, and they are ready for the challenge. Oh yeah, we're, we're very excited. Um, haven't, haven't done it in a while, so I think we're going to come out and play really hard because of it. The key to victory this week for Lawrence County will be on defense as they look to do the little things right. Tackle. We got to take care of the ball, and we got to be able to tackle, uh, especially their athletes in space. They got really good running backs, really good receivers. Their skill guys are really good. Uh, the quarterback's a threat to run or throw, uh, and then they'll take the uh, you know the best receiver. They'll put him in at quarterback, and run some wildcat stuff, and he's a threat to run there as well. So uh, we just get a great job leveraging the football and attacking. Speaking of rivalries, we have a big one going down on Friday night as well as Loretto makes its way to take on Summertown. This is Jason at Volco Auto Supply in Lawrenceburg. For over 90 years, Volco has been a family-owned company. We're proud of our past and excited about our future. We're open to the public for wholesale and retail trade. We carry product lines such as Milwaukee Tools, Lucas Oil, and Malco products. We carry all major brands of lubricants like Shell Rotella, Avalon, Castrol GTX, Mystic, Motorcraft, Valvoline, Kindle, and Mobile. We here at Volco offer a complete line of car detailing supplies, shop supplies, tire repair products, and lawnmower supplies. Check us out online at volcoautosupply.com or at 460. Team Buffalo Road here in Lawrenceburg. This is the good life. Truett's Garage Doors in Leoma, Tennessee is your one stop for new garage door installations for all commercial and residential buildings, plus they offer full service on all existing doors. Need a new garage door opener? Truett's Garage Doors has you covered. As an Amar Gold and LiftMaster dealer, Truett's Garage Doors offers the best pricing anywhere in the area. A family owned and operated business, Truett's Garage Doors has been helping Tennessee and Alabama residents since 1999. Call the pros today at Truett's Garage Doors, 931-201-6464. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Welcome back to the pregame show. Now heading to the other side of the county where Summertown is getting ready to take on Loretto. The Mustangs are 3-0 on the year while the Eagles are 0-3. But none of that matters when they kick it off. As the only thing that's on the line is bragging rights. 
Loretto is off to a fast start in 2023, sitting at 3-0 for the first time since 1996. Our guys are working real hard. They've worked real hard since November, and we've talked about that, about taking each game one quarter at a time. And they, the the fun part is, you know, whether we're three and one, three and zero, oh, two and one, one and two, these guys are fun to coach because they do what we ask them to do. They they practice hard, they play hard. They're a lot of fun to be around. So. Regardless of our record, this is a really fun group of guys to coach, and I enjoy being around them every day. On the other side for Summertown, the Eagles are 0-3 after dropping another close contest, this time on the road last week at Hickman County. Well, we came out and fought. We'd like to see probably better coming out after halftime, but first, first two quarters we played really good. Now it's time for the annual showdown between the two, and the rivalry means a lot for both sides. Summertown's a hard place to play, and we know that. And uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a big rivalry game, and you never know what happens in rivalry games. And we're just trying to prepare for them as best we can, and prepare for taking care of us. And, you know, we talk about taking care of us and, and making sure we're mentally prepared and physically prepared to play the game. And uh, it's going it ought to be a packed house and a big game and a great environment. And you know, hopefully, a lot of people show up. The road is good. Off to a good start. Uh, won some big games. Uh, and uh, they've got some good players. Uh, coach has been there a couple years now, a few years, and has got uh, things kind of going the way that they want it to go. And uh, that's the direction that we want to get our program. So it'll be a good test for us. Uh, home game, and uh, hopefully our guys will be excited to play. I think they will. The big focus will be the Loretto offense versus the Eagle defense, one everyone will be keeping an eye on. Every team's different in what they do and their personality and whatnot. Uh, and, and certainly Loretta's got a lot of good skilled people and they're taking advantage of that. The quarterback throws well. they got a good run game. they got good receivers. So, uh, yeah, it'll be the test. It'll be a, a good uh, challenge for our defense uh, Friday night. The goal for Friday for both teams is to bring home a win, but that will take a total team effort. We've got to play well early. I mean, you know, we've got to play well on defense. They do some stuff throwing the ball and with some misdirection stuff we've got to recognize. And then, you know, we've got to be fluid on offense as we have been and continue to continue to move the ball and score some points. And then we've got to rally to the ball and make good tackles on defense. But I want to see them get better every week. Uh, that's the, the whole goal throughout uh, any season, uh, any team, uh, no matter the record or whatever. Staying in that same region, while Mount Pleasant will hit the road for the third time in 2023, staying in the region, taking on Harpeth. Mount Pleasant made a statement in their region opener, putting up over 50 points against Waverly Central. We had a really tough opponent in uh, Waverly. Uh, not a lot of people expected us to have a chance to win the game, and uh, you know, our team really came out uh, playing fast and aggressive uh, and making it a physical ball game, and uh, you know that's what we wanted to do. And uh, and that was our plan all along, and, and that's, what, that's what worked for us. The offense was clicking, and the defense made several big stops to make the win happen. They, they were a 3 team. We knew that they were going to be tough, and we knew that we had to get involved, and we just, like, staying after practice on the field, putting extra work in, and uh, that's about it, extra work. Up next for the Tigers is another road trip, this time to Harpeth. You know, a big region matchup uh, who's going to be hungry for a win. Uh, you know, they had a tough game last week uh, with some tough breaks. They're definitely better than, than what the score showed. Um, you know, and it's a road game as well. So, uh, you know, we, we definitely uh, have to be ready as their team will uh, be prepared, and they play extremely hard. Mount Pleasant will be looking to keep this momentum going this weekend and continue what they've started. I think we got to build on uh, what we just did and with that balanced attack on offense. Uh, you know, we got a fast start, and I think we're a different team when we start fast and get our confidence going. Uh, so we want to continue to do that. Coming up next, we head on down the class single A to check in with Wayne County and Collinwood. Tennessee Flight Training. We are training the next generation of pilots. Come and see why Tennessee Flight Training is the best way to learn to fly. Tennessee Flight Training. The skies are calling. It's time for some straight talk about zero-turn mowers. Husqvarna zero-turn performance mowers with rugged commercial drive give you high performance and a comfortable ride. Heavy-duty frame and chassis, commercial hydraulics take no punishment. With warranties now up to five years and low financing options, there's no competition. For a straight-up deal on the best in professional zero-turn mowers, go straight to your Husqvarna dealer. 
For the best at home care in Lawrence County, the Summit at Home is the right company for you. We have a friendly staff over 25 that is trained, educated, and qualified to help with all your needs within your household. Our non-medical services include transportation, housework, dressing, and companionship. We are also covered by most long-term care providers. For more information, please call 931-762-2310. Southern Tennessee Orthopedics welcomes orthopedic surgeon Dr. Paul Thomas. Count on Dr. Paul Thomas, podiatrist Dr. James Barksdale, and nurse practitioner Doug Eid at Southern Tennessee Orthopedics to keep your life in motion. Injuries and foot pain can rob you of the activities you enjoy most, so our team is here, close to home, to address the pain and to get you moving again. Southern Tennessee Orthopedics, from the routine to the unforeseen, you can count on us. To learn more, visit southerntennesseemedicalgroup.com or to schedule an appointment, call 931-762-4400. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Welcome back to the pregame show. Now heading over to Wayne County where the Wildcats are getting ready for a big week four showdown. The top team in the region, Moore County, will come to Waynesboro as the Wildcats will be aiming for the big upset. Wayne County dropped to 1-2 and two on the season last Friday with a late heartbreaking region loss to Richland. Well, they never gave up. Uh, you know, it, it's never the result you want to get beat by two there. Uh, but, you know, they always they always fought just like week one and week two. You know, they, they never gave up, fought to the end. Um, but obviously we got some things we got to do better at. Consistency on offense has been a problem at times this year for the Wildcats, something they need to correct. Consistency and finishing. Um, you know, it felt like last week was kind of a repeat of week one where we'd get down and drive it down and shoot ourselves in the foot and stuff like that and, you know, hurt ourselves with penalties and those types of things. So um, we just got to do a better job of finishing. I got to do a better job putting the kids in position to finish. Up next for Wayne County is a visit from Moore County, one of the top teams in the region. But they're very athletic. Uh, some of the most athletic guys I've ever seen out there, especially that quarterback, uh, uh, Dawson White, I think. He's good. Uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, QB scramble. Goal for the Wildcats is to slow down the Raider offense and find ways to put points on the board. Uh, well, you got to try to slow him down. Uh, you know, we try to try to ball control, try to keep our offense on the field as much as possible. Um, you got to try to slow him down. He's got some guys that go with him. Um, you know, it's not just him. You know, they got a really good football team. Um, so we got to try to contain all those guys. Staying in County, where Collinwood picked up its first win of 2023 last week, trying to pick up another one within the region as they take on Eagleville. Collinwood is feeling good after its first win of 2023 on the road last week at Cornersville. I liked how we played. I like how we played all four quarters. I like how nobody backed down. I hope that's what we do uh, this coming up Friday against Eagleville. I hope that uh, everybody just makes plays, break down in open field because they got a shifty uh, player number two. Uh, that's about it. I just hope we'll go out there and execute. The Trojans were able to correct a lot of mistakes from the previous game, and now the goal is to keep that momentum rolling. For the first time, you know, in a while, I think we really was ready to play, and we played four four quarters. You know, I mean, we made some mistakes, but we did we didn't let them get us down. We, you know, we we overcome them, and uh, you know, and I hopefully that just gives us a little confidence and, and be able to 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 you know carry that forward. Up next for Colin Woods is a showdown with Eagleville, a team with more challenges than one. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, they are totally different. You know, they're going to spread us all out and all over the field and, uh, you know, just kind of get in some space and they run it by as much as they throw it. So, uh, you know, we just got to do a good job, you know, tackling, breaking down and, and tackling. And I think, you know, we'll be OK. Trojans will be aiming for their second win of the season and in the region, but that will need a complete focus on both sides of the ball. Same thing, you know, no mistakes. And we've done a really good job protecting the football. Uh, you know, we put on ground, we got them back, you know, and uh, uh, you know, we just you know, there's a there's a few things we got to clean up, but if we could do that, I think we'd be I think we'd be in good shape. I think we can, you know, uh, just you know, offense is just got to not shoot hurt ourselves and put ourselves in a bad situation. I think we'll be good. That does it for the pregame show. Kickoff is just a few minutes away at all of these local games, and don't forget to check out all the highlights coming up tonight on the final score. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network.
Jack Davis Insurance, located at 201 West Gain Street in Lawrenceburg, has you covered through life's obstacles. Facing those challenges is easier together. That's why Jack Davis specializes in group insurance. Cover the most valuable aspect of your business, your employees, with coverage for life, accident, cancer, critical illness, short-term disability, dental, and vision. Jack Davis can customize to meet every need. Serving Lawrence and surrounding counties since 1987. Contact Jack Davis Insurance today at 931-242-5225. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Well, we have got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell for the 68th time <laughs> in their history and the first time since 2018. Giles County and Lawrence County will meet up on the gridiron. This is AJ Good, joined by Dusty Kaiser. Got our producer extraordinaire Kevin Wright joining us as well. Dusty, a battle here of two pretty good teams. Two teams kind of in precarious spots here. Lawrence County at 2-1, and one, got their first region win the last week. And you got Giles County 1-2, and two, hasn't played a region game just yet. But two teams, two bitter rivals that had a, a long and storied, very contentious history. And like we mentioned, for the first time in five years, they're meeting up on the field when something matters. You know, that's right, AJ. You know, I went to school here, so I got to be a part of four years of the Cowbell game back then. And let me tell you something. It was an all-out, just just a slugfest on the field. And I don't think we're going to see anything different tonight than we did 25 years ago when I was in school. But I'm really excited for this game, and I'm glad that they're bringing back the Cowbell game to our schedule. Yeah, it's it's a big one, and and it's amazing when I've looked up the history of this game, Dusty, how close it is. Lawrence County has a slight edge at 33-32 and 2. So if you look ties. through the – yeah, when you look at the history of this game, it's one team kind of goes on the run, the other team goes on the run, mm -hmm. and, you know, they, there is some interchanging changing wins, but for the most part there's like Giles wins three in a row, Lawrence County wins four, Giles wins one, Lawrence County wins three, right. Giles wins six. It's it's kind of a – it's a fun rivalry. It definitely reminds you of a history of a really historic college football rivalry, something within that matter. But they are meeting up for the first time since 2018, last time in that game. Giles County won it on the field. However, they were playing with an ineligible player, so that got forfeited. Lawrence County got that win because of the forfeit. They did have to forfeit all their games that season because of use, the use of an ineligible player. So Lawrence County technically owns the cowbell, even though they really don't have it in their possession. Huh, that's interesting. I did not know that, but yeah. Um... I'm excited. I think that our boys are going to come out ready to play. But we know that Giles County is not just going to lay down. They've, no. As you got your stuff in front of you, they've uh, they've had a pretty successful season so far. They've played three historically good teams. They, they've lost to Page in overtime, 35-34. Page has been the Class 5A runner-up the last two years. Lost at, lost against Hardin County 34-28. to Hardin County scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter in that game to win it. But then took care of business against what's a traditionally tough Fayetteville team. Mm -hmm. Beat them 44-20. to On the other side, Lawrence County, a 14-7 win over Summertown here in week one. Go to Loretto, lose that one late 24-20. Then have a big rushing performance. Over 450 yards total rushing, that is, against Lincoln County in a 27-21 new region opening win. So these two teams have played some pretty, pretty tough schedules to start off. There is no easy game on there for anyone and some traditionally good programs, especially when you look at the Lincoln Counties, the Page, Hardin Counties, and the Fayettevilles of the world. That's right. And, you know, I'm going to bring up last Friday night. We, uh, we seen a performance by this Lawrence County offense. That offensive line, they've done their job. And Latavion Everly and Isaiah Bentley and Ian Clayton – they showed out. Um, we did have a change of quarterback. We threw the football a little bit more than we've seen. And uh, I think it opened up the run a little bit more. And Lincoln, and Fayette, or Lincoln County, we just kind of punched them in the mouth a little bit with that run. Yeah. Well, you, speaking of that three-headed monster, Latavian Everly coming into this game, he has 422 yards on the season with four scores. Isaiah Bentley. 
362 yards with three scores. And you have Ian, excuse me, it's Ian Clayton that has 362 yards and three touchdowns. And Isaiah Bentley with 229 yards and two touchdowns. The quarterback will be Jacob Trammell. He got his first start last week. He's four of eight for 15 yards as both teams enter the field. On the other side for Giles County, you got to worry about their big left-handed quarterback, Johnny Jackson, averaging 177 through the air, 56 on the ground. Their star running back, Zori Randolph, he's averaging 112 on the ground. And their star receiver, Kamari Turner, we know that name from basketball <laughs> and baseball, a three-sport star there for the Bobcats. He's averaging 96 yards in receiving. So, I mean, they're, they're talented. They're always going to be talented. We know what to expect when you see the Giles County Bobcats on the other sideline. Oh, that's right. You know, they've always brought a good football program, and this is going to be no different tonight. What about the crowd, though, AJ? What a great crowd. Across, I man. mean, yeah, it's packed over there like we would expect. It's packed here in front of us. Of course, the people standing up, making it hard for our cameras to see the, see the game here. So, uh, hey, that's a good sign if they're on their feet here early. Lawrence County will get the ball to start things off. They're wearing their all-gray uniforms with white numerals outlined in purple. purple. I always want to say purple instead purple. of purple, but they're wearing purple and they got white hats. The other side, Giles County, all white uniforms, black helmets, gold numerals outlined, and black. So Wildcats, just like last week, choosing to take the ball first, just like they did at Loretto, and they didn't against Summer. I think well, Summertown got the ball first yeah, in Summer that Town game. Got, yes. So in three of the four games, they are getting the ball first. So Ian Clayton is back deep to return. Can I call can I call my first play like I did last week? Yeah. White lightning on a jet sweep. White lightning on a jet sweep. Okay. It'll be Chase Carton here to kick this one away. Well, he's got we gotta see what happens on the kickoff first. We may see white lightning right here. <laughs> Carton is ready to kick this one away. And we are ready for Wildcat football here on the X Sports Network. And Carton with a boot. Good. Yeah, white lightning just watched that one hit the upper right. <laughs> And that one goes way out of the end zone. Chase Carden, he's a pretty good baseball player and basketball player, and he just tattooed that good thing. Good gracious. <laughs> so the Wildcats will take over first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. I look like so, some of the college kicks we've seen this past weekend. The Bobcat defense is a defense that's given up over 150 yards rushing in their first three games this season. Another thing to look out for, they've given up at least two touchdowns in the fourth quarter in all three games. So... We'll see what happens here. I mean, we're not foreshadowing anything, just pointing out what we've seen in the statistics as Trammell will go here out of the pistol. It's a handoff to Latavion Everly, and he maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage. So no game will bring up a second down and 10. A lot of Bobcats there making the stop, leading the charge there was Amari Smith, the big senior. So of course, we know what to see out of this Wildcat team, a wing team offense. Sometimes, like you saw in the first play of the game, they will go out of the pistol from time to time. But they'll go traditionally here with Bentley and Everly behind Trammell. Clayton will go in motion. And it's a handoff to Bentley, oh, and he's, he's got, got some room. room. And he's still going and gets about a yard short of the line to gain. So a nine-yard pickup will bring up a third down and one. That's a great run by Isaiah. He just hit his hole and just took off. That got that motion on that counter play. I'm telling you, counter play is hard to stop when you get the guard and the tackle coming around, yes. especially when the linebackers are flowing towards where Clayton and Everly went, and you have that quick pop the other way. So Trammell go under center, Everly and Bentley behind him, the exact same formation as before. Clayton will go in motion. It's just a handoff to Everly. He's got the first down. And a little bit more. They're going to mark him down at the 32-yard line, and that is enough for a Wildcat first down. And their first third down conversion of the game. That's one thing there, Dusty. If they can keep, if they get into third down situations, they can keep them third and manageable with this offense and the way you, with these backs, you can chew up a lot of clock. You can chew up a lot of clock for sure. And we've seen them do that against Loretta. It's Clayton and Everly behind Trammell. Bentley now is the wing out of the wing tee. It's a handoff here to Clayton, and Clayton's going to go around the side and oh. gets it down to the 35-yard line. So a pickup of about three, and that will bring up a second down and seven. Giles County kind of had that red right there, A.J. They started flooding to this side, and he's on the short side of the field. He didn't have enough time to really get turned upfield. 
It's actually a second down and eight here for the Wildcats. So a two-yard pickup there for Clayton. As Skyler Moomy, I apologize to Skyler and his family. I've been saying his name wrong for the last two years, but he is lined up on the opposite side. Now here out of the fully loaded pistol to hand off to Everly. And he's going to push the pile, and they're going to mark him at about the 38-yard line, so a three-yard pickup. And, again, another third and manageable situation here for the Wildcats. Third and five? Yeah, third and five. Uh, maybe a long four, short five. Maybe. Clock now at 9.15, as you can read here on the scoreboard. And for those who are listening to us on our mini exports radio networks, Third and five coming up here for the Wildcats. Trammell out of the pistol again. Bentley and Clayton the wings, Everly behind him. And it's an end around, and it's oh, fumbled. fumbled the football. Bentley fumbles it. Giles County will recover at the 33-yard line, and they will take over first down and 10. Wow. Put the ball on the ground right off the bat right there. So that was Amari Smith making the recovery, and they will take over first down and 10 in Wildcat territory at the 33. So, don't know how that game, how that would have eventually turned into, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, first down and ten here for the Bobcats. Johnny Jackson will be the quarterback. He's working out of the shotgun, and it's a handoff to Randolph over the left side, and Randolph. And looks like they're going to bring him down right at the 30. So a three-yard pickup will bring up second down and seven. That play looked like it was going to go for a little bit more, but the Wildcat defense was able to recover quickly. And now Kamari Turner is going to be a quarterback here. Turner has played quarterback before for the Bobcats. In fact, we saw him in the uh, Jamboree a year ago. And it's a handoff to Randolph, and Randolph cuts it up the oh. field. He's got a lot of room to run, makes Touch another down. man miss, and he will go into the end zone for the 30-yard score, and the Bobcats now lead this one 6 to nothing. Wow, A.J., that didn't take long at all. That's just good hard running. And he made a couple guys miss and, frankly, made that look easy. He so broke that second tackle. Oh, we got a flag. We on the do play have back a flag the on the play. This is coming back. Yeah, and a lot of celebration here for nothing. Holding. And we'll be holding yep. against the Bobcats. So that will bring it back. No, that will take the score off of the board. Well, Lawrence County picked up a break right there. Yeah, they did. And that will now mark the ball at the 36-yard line. So first penalty for either side in this game. Now we'll make it now second down and 11. Giles County goes no huddle, but they're not in no hurry up. Yeah. Just surveying. It is Kamari Turner at quarterback. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Turner, straight drop back. Here comes pressure from Cade Brown. Turner's now going to cut up field across the 30 and gets taken out of bounds very close here to the yard at the yard to gain. It'll be very, Gosh. very close to a first down. It'll be about a yard short. Bring up third down here for the Bobcats at the 25. They gotta get they gotta get hands on that better. Yeah, they had him bottled up there for a moment. So third down and one first third down situation here for the Bobcats. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, tight end to the right as well. We got Randolph to a Turner. Excuse, yeah, Turner's left here out of the shotgun. Turner just going to call his own number. He's got the first down and more into the red zone across the 10 and gets brought down at the uh, two-yard line. Actually going to mark him down at the one, the one, and that will be a 25-yard gain and a first down and goal coming up for the Bobcats. Another good run by Giles County. They ain't had to throw the football. They're running the ball just when they want to. So first and goal from the one. 7.45 left the play here in the first quarter. Staying out of the shotgun, but Turner will go under center. And it's a handoff to Randolph. And 
He will power his way into the end zone. That will touchdown. be a touchdown. And the Bobcats get back on the board here, leading this one six to nothing. Well, they've scored twice on this drive now. Only one counts. Yeah. 7.34 remaining here in the first quarter. The Bobcats leading this one 6 0. We'll be Chase Carden on to attempt the extra point and watch out for all the cars here in the parking lot. He's got plenty of leg. And the snap is back. The kick is up, and that kick is good. So with 7.34 remaining in the first quarter, Giles County leads this one 7-0. We'll have the next Wildcat drive when we return on the Exports Network. Distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Gosh. And back here at Hendrick Stack Stadium, it was a four play, 33 yard drive, capped off by a Zori Randolph one yard touchdown run. Giles County leads Lawrence County in the Battle of the Cowbell, seven to nothing. Chase Carton going to kick this one away. That one's out of the end zone. Once again, and Lawrence County will take over for the second straight drive. First down and 10 from their own 20. Previous drive was six plays, 18 yards, but an unfortunate fumble gave Giles County the ball at the Wildcat 33, and they scored four plays later. Yeah, they, uh, they done what they needed to right there. It was, that fumble was the only, only the second turnover by the Wildcat defense, excuse me, Wildcat offense this season. So Jacob Trammell leading the Wildcats back on the field, trailing 7-0, 7 734 left on the first quarter clock. Trammell going under center, Everly and Clayton behind him. It will be a toss here to Clayton. Clayton's got he's some room going. into oh, the going. open field. The 40, he's 50, going. he's got one man to beat. Put it on the board, touchdown Wildcats. No flags on the play and it is a one point game. Number 22, White Lightning, Ian Clayton. What a run. And just like that, Dusty, nobody there. An 80-yard touchdown. And now we've got an injured Wildcat here on the play. As it's one of the wide receivers, it looks like. So something happened there right at the last moment as the training staff goes out there. That's Isaiah Bentley. That is Isaiah Bentley. So while they go and check on Isaiah, we will take a break here on the Exports Network. I'm Mike Keith, and my friends at Elliott Johnson Insurance have a great partner in Auto Owners Insurance. Auto Owners makes it easy to get life, home, car, or business insurance. Let Elliott Johnson Insurance find the auto owner's policy that makes a difference in your life. Call Elliott Johnson Insurance at one of their three locations, Florence, Loretta, and Lawrenceburg. Elliott Johnson Insurance, moving forward for our clients every day. Old School Rentals in Loretto, Tennessee is headquarters for all your rental equipment needs. Need a trailer? How about saws, tools, loaders, or generators? You can find all of that and much, much more at Old School Rentals, owner Ryan Smith, located on North Main Street in Loretto, Tennessee. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. So that's Isaiah Bentley coming off the field. We hope he is okay. Sarah Morrison on to attempt the extra point after Ian Clayton took the first play, their second possession off the toss, 80 yards for a touchdown. Morrison on to tie this game up here at seven. Snap is back, the kick is up, and that kick is... Good. So with 7.21 remaining in the first quarter, this game is tied up at 7. We'll have the next Bobcat possession when we return here on the Exports Network.
Truett's Garage Doors in Leoma, Tennessee is your one stop for new garage door installations for all commercial and residential buildings, plus they offer full service on all existing doors. Need a new garage door opener? Truett's Garage Doors has you covered. As an Amar Gold and LiftMaster dealer, Truett's Garage Doors offers the best pricing anywhere in the area. A family owned and operated business, Truett's Garage Doors has been helping Tennessee and Alabama residents since 1999. Call the pros today at Truett's Garage Doors, 931-201-6464. Ian Clayton takes the first play of the second possession, 80 yards for the touchdown. Sarah, Sarah Morrison's extra point is good. We are tied at 7, 720 remaining here in the first quarter. Justice Hughes on to uh, kick this one away. Wildcats typically don't kick it deep. But he's but, lining up deep. Yep. Well, the way the ball's on the tee, this isn't going to go really far. Could be wrong. Hughes will, it's going to squib, and that goes off a oh. Giles County player, and they do get on it in time at the 42-yard line, and that's where they'll take over first down and 10 from the, uh, their own 42. So their first possession went four plays, 33 yards, and a touchdown. Actually, this one is marked at the 43, so not as good as field position as previously as they took advantage of a Wildcat turnover. So it will be Kamari Turner at quarterback again. Two receivers to the right, tight end to the right. Actually double tight ends here in this situation. Handoff here, and that's Randolph, and it's oh, the ball! ball. Ball's the out. ball is out! And Giles County does fall on it. And actually they're gonna say his forward progress was stopped at the 45 yard line. So he will pick up two and make it second down and eight. And it looks like Latavian Everly is taking a knee here. And he'll have to come off the field here. I get he pointed to it, he might have a contact issue. Or he's got something in his eye or something up his nose or something. So something. Yeah. Second down and nine here from the 45. Turner still a quarterback. He's going to call his own number here across the right side oh, of the Wildcat territory. He's got a lot of room. He's got one man to beat, and he will take this one to the house as the Bobcats now lead this one 13-7 to with 6.35 remaining in the first quarter. There was, he made one man miss, and that was it. And he is in the end zone with a 13 to 7 lead. Chase mm. Carden here on, on to attempt the extra point. <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, you know, the, some of those schools do that muddle huddle. It's just a waste of time. So, Carden. Snap is back, here comes a kick, and that kick is good. 6.35 remaining here in the first quarter, and Giles County leads at 14 to seven, the Battle of the Cow Belt. We'll have the next possession for Lawrence County when we return on the Exports Network. At Southern Tennessee Realty in Lawrenceburg, owner and broker Fred Webb is always working with his realtors to ensure they're ready for game day to score you the biggest win for your home or property. From being the best train to knowing the land or home they're selling, the crew at your local United Country office is ready to give you their all. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, turn to Southern Tennessee Realty today and let them put their years of combined experience to work for you. Because everyone around here knows if Southern Tennessee Realty can find Bigfoot, they can find you a buyer. Tennessee Flight Training. We are training the next generation of pilots. Come and see why Tennessee Flight Training is the best way to learn to fly. Tennessee Flight Training, the skies are calling. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Two play, 57 yard drive, capped off by Kamari Turner's 55 yard touchdown run. Giles County leads a 14 to seven. This kick is short to Clayton. And Clayton's going to return this one down to the 25-yard line. So the Wildcats will get their best 
possession, field position here of the game. First down and 10 from their own 25. So we're getting, uh, it's an ankle injury for Isaiah, and it uh, looks like he, they got his shoulder pads off, and unfortunately he'll be out for the rest of the game. And uh, hope for the best for Isaiah. Very good football player and a very good uh, baseball player as well. So Jaden Trammell lead the offense back on the field. He's got Clayton and Everly behind him. Skyler Moomy, the long uh, split out to the right. Motion coming from Elijah Young. And it's a handoff to Clayton. And Clayton maybe gets it to the 26-yard line. And one-yard run will bring up second down and nine. Yeah, that hole never had time to develop, AJ. He just didn't have nowhere to go. So one-yard gain here. Wildcats will have to be shifting in a lot of different guys with the injury here to Bentley. Everly behind Trammell here in the full, fully loaded pistol. There's six minutes left to play in the first quarter. Elijah Young will get the jet sweep. And Man, that didn't go nowhere. Didn't go anywhere. He might have lost a yard. Looks like he lost a couple there. Gets brought down at the 24 yard line and bring up third down and 11. So, first third long situation here for the Wildcats in the game. Trammell didn't look impressive first time throwing the ball last week against Lincoln County. Even had a ball that should have been caught for Ooh. a touchdown. That was an absolute dime. Oh, that was a beautiful pass. Clayton coming in motion. Trammell will straight drop back. He'll throw it. And here comes the pressure. And he's going to get stacked up and brought down at the 15-yard line. He gets sacked, and that will bring the punt unit on for the Wildcats. So he will get brought down at the 15. That's a nine-yard loss to bring up fourth down and 20. Punt unit on. It'll be Caden Berg back to kick it away. And it looks like that is Turner back deep to return. I think so. Snap back to Bird. Kick is up, a wobbly spiral. It's going to land. Turner will field it at his own 46, now in the Wildcat territory. And didn't still go down, feet. stayed on his feet, and he's got a plenty of blockers he's the gone. other way. Turner doesn't have anyone. We do have a penalty flag. He does go in the end zone, but we do have a penalty flag at the 28-yard line. Something had, there's a, Something had. about three flags around one Wildcat and three white jerseys. So we'll see what happens here. We have a personal foul, blindside block. So that will bring that one way back. So that personal foul penalty. So they will take over first down and 10 from their 43 yard line. So what would have been another touchdown. Now brings up first down and 10 here for Giles County. Now it is Jackson, a quarterback. And here comes Jackson, and he will bring it down to the 35-yard line. Now bring up a second down and two. We're getting pressure. He's just yeah. stepping up and getting yeah. away from it. Second down and two coming up here. Now Turner back at quarterback in that ball. And they're now going to throw a penalty flag here on the play. Flag on the play. 
And that's going to be a dead ball personal foul here against the Wildcats. And that will move it to the 20 yard line. That's where the Bobcats will take over first down and 10. Now Turner, handoff here up the middle. And he'll get stacked up and brought down at the 16-yard line. They'll bring up second down and four. Lawrence County side's got really quiet, AJ. Yeah, they, they get have. the crowd back into the game. So the Giles County offense back here on the field. And it's Randolph again, and Randolph will take this one very close to the line again, and he will have it. He'll bring up first down and goal from the 10-yard line. Get a little, getting a little chippy out there, yeah, AJ. Yeah, it is getting a little chippy. Yeah, a little we, bit more. Uh, we did certainly notice that. So Turner now going to call his own number, has a lot of room. And it's going to take it down to the two-yard line. So I'll bring up second down and goal here from the two. So about the Bobcats here getting on the ball quickly. Minute 45 left here in the first quarter. They're just going to go under center. It's a handoff, I believe, to Randolph, and he will get into the end zone, and that will make it 20-7 to Giles County with a minute 39 left here in the first quarter. So Randolph picks up his second touchdown of the game, and that will bring up a – bring Cardin on to kick this one away as they lead it now 20-14. to So Cardin's kick is on its way, and it is good. Minute 39 left here in the first quarter. Lawrence County trails Giles County 21-7. to will have the next Wildcat possession when we return here on the Exports Network. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. Fall on the Hill returns to Minor Hill October 7th from 2 to 8 with live music all day, vendors, hay rides, a petting zoo, Pony Wagon Rides, a pop-up paint party, face painting, putt-putt golf, a jams and jellies contest, inflatables, and much more. Plus, don't miss the fireworks show at 8 p.m. Fall on the Hill 2023, brought to you by Minor Hill Alliance and Liquor World. Enjoy a day full of awesome music from Brace Killen, Damon Schrader, Josh Reisner, and Salem Rats. Armbands are $5. Don't miss Fall on the Hill, October 7th from 2 to 8 at 165. Mm. And back here is Caleb Smith-Wiley takes the opening kick from the one out to the 26. And that's where the Wildcats will take over first down and 10. Best starting field position at their own 26-yard line. So a couple decent kick returns there for uh, Lawrence County here. As they trail Giles County who had a five-play 43-yard drive. Make it 21-7 off another Randolph one-yard touchdown run. Minute 34 left here in the first quarter as Trammell will lead the offense back on the field. Everly and Clayton behind him. And a toss here to Everly. And he's got he's some room, moved. Dusty. And he's going to bring it down to the 34-yard line. No penalty flag. So an eight-yard pickup here will bring up second down and two. Pretty good 
run there by Latavian. Good blocking on the outside. They've had some success here early on with those tosses out here to the left side of the Bobcat defense, or I their right side, I should I mean, say. We know that that's what we need to do. Trammell under center. I believe that's Elijah Young and Everly behind him. Clayton is the wing. It's another toss to Everly. He's going to cut up field, and he's going to get very close here to the line to gain. And he might have it. Depends on the spot. And actually, he might be a yard short. I think he is a yard short. It's going to be third and one. Yeah, he is a yard short, so bring up third down and one. Actually, you got the official on the Lawrence County side. I think they're going, yeah, they're going to give oh. Lawrence County the first down. Okay. I thought it looked pretty close. Well, from at our angle and, yeah. and the way this field makes that hump, yeah. it, uh, it does sometimes make it difficult. Third first down in the game for Lawrence County as we go under 35 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Mumi is alone split out here to the left. Trammell now out of the fully loaded pistol. Beverly behind him. Young will go in motion. And it's going to be an end around the Clayton. And Clayton has oh, some he's room. And he's going to get down to the 39-yard line. So that's a pickup of three to bring up second down and seven. Might be the final play here of the first quarter. I believe it is. Actually, they're going to try to get it, but they don't get the playoff in time. So after 12 minutes of play, Giles County leads in the Battle of the Cowbell 21-7. to We'll have the start of the second quarter when we return here on the X Sports Network. Lawrenceburg Flooring and More is your premier source for hardwood, laminate, luxury vinyl tile, sheet vinyl, residential and commercial carpet, carpet tiles, ceramic and porcelain tile, waterproof floating floor, plus blinds and shutters. Lawrenceburg Flooring and More is also home to all name brands and can tackle projects big and small. Installation? You're covered with installers who've got years of experience and stand behind their work. Let Lawrenceburg Flooring and More make your design dreams a reality. 2760 Highway 43 North or visit LawrenceburgFlooringAndMore.com are you looking for a job where you can easily balance work and home life? By becoming an over-the-road driver at Southeast Carriers, we guarantee you can spend equal time on the road as with family. Along with multiple benefits, you will receive a base pay of 50 cents per mile. To make your job as easy as possible, we provide you with the latest technology and you are not required to deliver through the heavy traffic along the East Coast. Southeast Carriers isn't just a company, it's a family and we would love for you to be a part of it. For more information, visit our website at southeastcares.com or check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Start of the second quarter here. Lawrence County adds its second down and seven. Trammell rolls out, throws, and hits, hit a, hits an open man, and he will make the catch. Actually, they say he doesn't make the catch at the 42. Whoa. And the... One official act like he was going to call that a completed pass, and the other one who didn't have much of a view called an incomplete. So that will bring up third down and seven. And we're in the complete dark here, yeah, folks. Yeah, someone turned Somebody's out the lights, lights here. out on us. Trammell here will go out of the shotgun. Straight drop back throws, and that one is bounced around, almost intercepted, intended for Skylar Mumi. And that will bring on the pun unit for the second time tonight. So it'll be Caden Bird on to punt it away as the lights come back on in our booth here. <laughs> Kind of strange. Yep. Kamari Turner's back deep to return, who's done him and Randolph have done pretty much everything here for the Bobcats done a tonight. Man team tonight. Caden Bird, the left footed punter, waiting on the snap. That is back, and the kick is up, and this is a pretty good punt. Really good punt. For roll it, land at the 25, and that's where Elijah Young will scoop it up, and that's where the Bobcats will have their worst starting field position of the game from their own 25 yard line. 
So Giles County is three for three so far. Four play, 33 yard drive. Two play, 57 yard drive, and the five play, 43 yard drive, all for touchdowns. Beautiful weather tonight. Mm -hmm. We hadn't talked about that. The weatherman's oh, yeah. been good to us. Got the fall in the air. It definitely feels like a fall night. I mean, it has that kind of crisp in it the does. air. It's, it's been a good night so far. So it's Turner. And he's going to call his own number. K. Brown going to bring him down in the backfield. They read that one pretty they good. Did. The first loss in the game here for the Bobcats. That's going to bring up second down and 11. K. Brown was there the moment he pulled the snap out and or he pulled the handoff out and just wrestled him to the ground. Keetron Cox has come off the field. This is the second time he's come off the field limping on his right ankle. <clears throat> Injuries starting to pile up here for the Wildcats. Under 10 seconds here on the play clock. Turner out of the shotgun. Now it's five seconds. They might have to burn a timeout here. Now they get the playoff in time. Turner had nobody there. He's going to have to call his own number. And gets brought down at about the 28-yard line. So he gets a four-yard gain. And that's going to bring up a third down and seven here for the Bobcats. So that looked like a busted play. Turner thought he was going to hand it off to the right. And the guy went around him. <laughs> So, I mean, the coaches beside us here were trying to call a timeout. I think they knew that something was uh, – not only was the play clock going down, they knew something, something wasn't yes, right. Something wasn't right. So now they're trying to get the plays in on the sideline. We're now at 10 seconds on the play clock, but they work out of a no huddle, so it's mm -hmm. not really an issue getting the playoff. As Turner now gets a snap, rolls out to his right, throws. It's an open receiver, and that is will be enough here for a first down. First down. Can't tell who made the catch there. Looked like Kareem Bryant. And they will have Number a first down and 10 from the maybe? 25. Is that what that says? Jackson Durham, maybe. No, that's, oh, that's the one that just come. Uh -huh. First down and 10 from the 39. It's We'll try to do better, yeah. folks. Apologize. It's, it's hard to read with those gold numerals from a distance. So Turner, now to hand off the Randolph up the middle. He's got some room. Oh, man. Makes a nice move and gets into Wildcat territory, brought down at the 49-yard line, and that will bring up another first down here for the Bobcats. He puts his foot in the ground as quick as anybody. Another good run there for Randolph, and now they're in Wildcat territory here for the fourth time in four drives. Clock now 9.15 remaining in the first half. Turner, another handoff to Randolph. And he gets brought down at the 43-yard line. Pick up a six to bring up second down and four. Randolph, the Bacarrier, second down. Second down, down. That was 25. Good call, Dustin. That made that Well, catch. I thought it was. I don't see like I used to. Or is that 26? That's yeah. Dylan Boy, I think it's Dude. a 26. See, I still, you see, you're better than I am. Turner now going to call his own number, and he's got oh. the first down and more up the middle and oh. still going, well, breaking a breaking couple tackles. tackles and gets brought down. Looks like at either the, say, at the nine yard line, it'll be first down and goal here for the Bobcats. Up the 34 yard run. It's number 84 for Lawrence County. It brought him down. Perez. Demetrius Silva. Oh, uh, Silva, yeah. And Turner does a quarterback sneak. Turner with the carry, second down. And he gets brought down at the eight-yard <laughs> line, a one-yard gain, second down and goal here for the Bobcats. So two receivers to the left, one to the right. Turner out of the shotgun, calls his own number again. And we got a penalty flag. As Turner goes into the end zone, and that is going to be holding. That's coming back. <clears throat> so we'll be holding against the Bobcats, and 
That one looked pretty obvious from here. From the nine, so they will send that one back to believe to the 19. Yeah, I mean, when you go like up under the pads yeah. and almost like in a rear naked choke, yeah. that's holding. Yeah. Just like they say, you know, once you feel kind of that like they're moving away, you got to let them go. Yeah. And they're going to mark this at the. Should be the 19. Yeah, 19. Or, yeah, and be kind of in between the eight, a long, 18 and eight, 19. Yeah. 7.52 on a stop second quarter clock. Turner still out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. And now we have a Josh timeout County. here called by Giles County with 7.52 left. We will take that break with them here on the X Sports Network. Do you have a small farm, a big farm, or just critters in the backyard to feed? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you need to make the short drive down to A&B Feeds in Etheridge, Tennessee today. Owner and operator Jamie Ayers has you covered and will treat you right. That's A&B Feeds in Etheridge, Tennessee. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Giles County burns its first time out here of the first half with 7.52 remaining. They have its second down and goal from their own ninth, from the Wildcat 19-yard line. Bring the offense back on the field. They had a Kamari Turner, Turner touchdown called back on a holding play. It's their second touchdown called back on the hold. Yes. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Turner with Randolph beside him, and, and it fumbles the ball. Right at the line of scrimmage. A great job by Kay Brown. Read that one. Randolph gives him a love tap after that yeah. one. <laughs> so that's going to bring up third down and goal from the 19. That's a second really good play that Kay is. Brown has made in reading that one. They do have a good kicker in Carton. Oh, he's good this from is, the 40. Yeah, this is definitely uh, in his range. So they'll go three receivers here to the left. Turner here with Randolph to his right out of the shotgun. Straight drop back. And he's going to step up. Now steps back, throws it, hits Randolph. And Randolph oh. makes a couple guys miss and goes into the end zone for the uh, touchdown. And that makes it 27 to 7. How are we missing this many tackles? Well, talking with Coach Marston uh, earlier this week, the big said, what's the keys to success? And he's, the first thing he said was tackle. And uh, that has unfortunately been an issue here for the Wildcats tonight as Cardin is on to attempt the extra point. Carden kick is up, and it is good. With 6.58 remaining in the first half, Giles County leads at 28 to 7. We'll have the next Wildcat possession when we return here on the Exports Network. Hey, this is Phil Hooper. Get the look you want for your favorite school, church, or business with apparel from HD Ink Screen Printing in Leoma, Tennessee. Got a logo you need embroidered or screen printed? Let HD Ink give you the professional look that sets the bar in today's world. We do fundraisers and custom designed apparel and so much more. Call today, 931-201-2961 or come see us at our new shop located at 26 Ingram Road in Leoma. Remember, HD Ink for the look you want and the look you deserve. Southern Tennessee Orthopedics welcomes orthopedic surgeon Dr. Paul Thomas. Count on Dr. Paul Thomas, podiatrist Dr. James Markstell, and nurse practitioner Doug Eid at Southern Tennessee Orthopedics to keep your life in motion. Injuries and foot pain can rob you of the activities you enjoy most, so our team is here, close to home, to address the pain and to get you moving again. Southern Tennessee Orthopedics, from the routine to the unforeseen, you can count on us. To learn more, visit southerntennesseemedicalgroup.com or to schedule an appointment, call 
4,400. Chase Carden's kick here is fielded at the 10-yard line, and he's got some room, makes one man miss, brought down at the 19. Returning of that one was Carter Pettigrew, so decent starting field position here for the Wildcats, taking over first down and 10 from their own 29 as they trail this one 28-7 after Giles County had a nine-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. So Wildcats have had back-to-back -back almost 20-yard kick returns. Needing to answer, Giles County has scored on all four possessions so far. 6.52 remaining here in the first half. Russell, Everly in the backfield. Two receivers to the left. Trammell, now it's a handoff here. And he's trying to get upfield, makes a couple oh. man miss on oh, his yeah. feet. Oh yeah, Across the 40, 45, and brought down out of bounds. And a oh. late hit, and a penalty brought down at the 43. Tack on 15, and that will go deeper into Bobcat territory. What a run by T. He just <laughs> drugged a couple guys, broke loose, and made even more out of it. There is a personal foul against the Bobcats, and that should take it to the Bobcat 28-yard line. Maybe kind of that momentum that Lawrence County needs here, Dusty. That's right. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. They should have it at the 28. And they will. So, hey, one play in. That was a great run by that He was, was waiting man. for Jacob Bertishaw to kind of cut up field. Yes. And once he did, he just found a little seam, drug a defender, and just kept going. And you're not just going to bring him down by one ankle. Trammell still out of the shotgun. Quick throw, and he hits Elijah Young. Makes one oh, guy got... miss. And actually he's going to pick up about five there uh, on the play. That is about five yards. So that will be at the 24, actually, a four-yard pickup. Now bring up second down and six. Hey, anytime you're staying ahead of the sticks here, and they're going to go no huddle here, Dusty. Oop. Now take a look here at the sideline. And they're going to try to play with some tempo. I like it. I do, too. Two receivers here to the left. Russell is the wing. Clayton beside Trammell, straight drop back throws, and he's got Moomy. Moomy makes the catch, stays on his feet, and he's down. going to get the first down. Down to the... 18-yard line. So the Wildcats here are putting together a bit of a drive. And it's a first down and 10 from the 18 as they go into the Bobcat red zone for the first time tonight. 550 remaining in the first half. Actually, it's at the 17. Stay out Tate of the shotgun. Well, yeah, Russell's the wing to the right. Everly to Trammell's left out shotgun. Two receivers to the left. Quick screen out there again The Young. And Young this time, not much to go. I think they're going to call him right at the original line of scrimmage. I think so. And we'll bring up a second down and ten. Actually, that is... Second down. Gage Smith, it's number I believe that's number 27. Well, I was looking at the other players, so I didn't. That yeah, is, number 27. It's Gage Smith who made those catches. We apologize. So it happened on the far side of the field, is, and we might have to call their first time out here the second half, or the first half. And David Marston does, 447 remaining. Wildcats driving, a second down and 10 in the Bobcat red zone. We'll have the next play when we return on the Exports Network. Whether it's popcorn, biscuits, or automotive, you need the right ingredients to achieve the best results. Heritage Automotive is proud to serve our community with a continually growing inventory. We also help our community grow by contributing to a vibrant economy which helps build schools. I'm Keith Durham and I'm the General Manager here at Heritage Automotive and it's my job to make sure that you're 100% satisfied. Heritage Automotive, your hometown Chevy and GMC dealer. 
Story and Lee, the Tennessee Valley's most dynamic furniture store, featuring our Made in America galleries with solid wood dining and bedrooms, leather furniture, mattresses, and so much more. You want it? We've got it. With our three acres of showroom and our huge warehouse, we're sure to have exactly what you want. And it's all ready to be delivered to your home absolutely free. Just try that anywhere else. We are Story and Lee. First time out burned by David Marston. The Wildcats have it second down and 11 from the Bobcat 18-yard line. And working here out of the shotgun, same formation, two receivers to the left. As Everly going to get the handoff. Oh, he's got he's the corner. Got some room. Cross oh, yeah. 15. That's he's going. We have a penalty flag on the play as Everly goes into the end zone. There's the penalty the flag, flag is thrown at the 18-yard line. So it looks like holding and... And that will take a Wildcat touchdown off the field. That's the third between both sides. So that will take it all the way back to the Bobcat 28. They're having some success on the edges. Unfortunately, that one's going to get called back. So they'll have it. Second down and 21 from their from the Bobcat 28-yard line. 440 remaining here in the first half. They'll go two receivers to the left. Mumi and Smith. Clayton now the trammels left. Tight end and a wing to the right. And now Trammell fakes it. He's gonna throw oh, here to Mumi. He's got him. Mumi. Ooh. And that one is knocked away at the last second. Falls incomplete. Now bring up third down and long. That was the third touchdown of this game has been called back. Yeah. I like that little play there. Good pump fake yeah. from Trammell, faking out the screen. And Mumi had about a foot on him, but good job by the Bobcat defender. Yeah, he that got his hand Looks up. like that was Turner. <laughs> Turner got his hands on it, hand on it at the last second. Now we're going to flip the formation. Two receivers to the right and the tight end and the wing to the left. Trammell, straight drop back, throws, hits Mooby, and Mooby's going to go out of bounds. And looking like at about the 23-yard line. And they do mark it at the 23, so five-yard pickup. Bring up fourth down here, and Wildcats are going to go for it here on fourth and 16. We've seen some crazy things already on uh, some of these third and long. Man, we long have. Things we sure season. have. So this is certainly not out of the realm of possibility. No. Ten seconds left on the play clock as they're trying to get lined up. Now Elijah Young is at it's Logan Clayton is the other receiver. Oh, high snap. Trammell struggles with the high snap. Rolling out here to his left. Throws. And that one is incomplete. So the Bobcats will take over first down and 10 from their own 23-yard line. That's a tough break right there for Lawrence County, A.J. A seven-play, 48-yard drive that ends with a turnover on downs. A lot of promise to that drive. So the Bobcats will bring their offense on the field. That's four for four on drive so far. A 33, 57, 43, and 75 yard touchdown drive. And they'll get the ball back with 425 remaining here in the first half. Turner will, looks like he's going under center this time. Whoop. Now they're gonna flip the formation. Now Turner, straight drop back off the play action. He's gonna lob it downfield. He's got an open receiver. Ooh. Just miss him. That was Kareem Bryan, and that will fall incomplete and bring up second down and 10. He just overthrew him by about two yards. Decent protection up front as well. <clears throat> that was a good throw. And we're not seeing their normal starting quarterback in Johnny Jackson, although he's, we've seen him for a couple snaps. But Yeah, but he hasn't been just a couple. Yeah. It's, it's been the Kamari Turner show, and he is – one heck of an athlete Man, he's he put is. on the show here so far tonight. Second down and 10, 419 remaining here in the second quarter. Randolph to Turner's right out of the shotgun. Turner going to call his own number. Has a lot of room. Got the first down and more. 
Going to go down the Bobcat sideline and brought down right at the Bobcat 49-yard line. Another first down off the 26-yard run. So, first down and 10. Turner went out of bounds, stops the clock at 410. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Randolph actually ahead of Turner, and Turner's going to call his own number. And Everly, Everly. bring him down Everly. right at the 47 of the Wildcats. So, it's about a. Four-yard pickup to bring up second down and six for the Bobcats. Under four minutes left to play in the first half. Man, this offensive line of Giles County, A.J., there's some big boys, and they're just pushing. They just keep pushing on us. We haven't had many passes so far in this game for Giles County. Turner, hand off to Randolph over the right side, pushing his offensive line and goes out of bounds. He'll be short of the line to gain. Uh, mark him at the 43. So it's going to bring up third down and two here for Giles County. And our guys are trying to get in there. This time Turner is going to be under center. Now this I formation. <laughs> yeah. Gone to it a couple times, mainly on the goal line. It's a handoff to Randolph, and he'll get the first down at the, the 40. First. So another third down conversion off the three-yard pickup, and first down and 10 for the Bobcats. Randolph with the carry, first down. So Bobcat offense continues to roll here. Five of five on third down here so far tonight. Handoff, and he, Turner, has got a lot of room. Makes a That's man a miss, and he is going to get into the end zone. No penalty flags, a 40-yard score from Kamari Turner, and it's a 34-7 Bobcat lead. Hey, Jay, this guy just seems like he gets faster and faster each drive. So Cardin on to attempt the extra point. A shifty formation. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. 3 or 4 remaining in the first half. Giles County leads Orange County 35 to 7. We have the next Wildcat drive when we return on the X Sports Network. From our humble beginnings to today, Parks Lumber Company has continuously served Lawrence and surrounding counties for over a century. Although we started as a small lumber yard in 1896, we have grown to include everything you need to make your dream project come to life. No matter your building needs, our experienced staff will be with you every step of the way to ensure you receive the highest customer service and attention to detail you deserve. Visit us at 106 Second Street or on Facebook. We guarantee you will see working with PLC is as easy as one, two, three. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. And back here after a six play 77 yard drive capped off by Kamari Turner's 40 yard touchdown run, his second of the game, third overall after a passing touchdown as well. Giles County leads it 35 to seven with 3.04 remaining in the first half. Kick here from Carden. End over end, fielded by Wiley right at the one yard line. He's gonna take it here over the right side, cuts up field, and continues to go, brought down at the 26. So another decent return here for the Wildcats, and they'll take over first down and goal from their own 26, first down and 10 from their own 26. 2.55 remaining. Wildcats had a promising drive on the previous 
drive went seven plays, 48 yards, and eventually turned it over on downs. Did have a touchdown call back because of a hold. Right. <clears throat> they will continue out of the shotgun. Everly is behind. Trammell here out of the pistol. Two receivers still left. Russell will go in motion. It's a handoff to Everly. Everly's got some room. And we'll take Everly it to the 31, a five-yard pickup. We'll bring up second down and five. I think Russell is uh, paving the way for uh, some oh, of these backs. Man, that's a that's a bowling ball coming through that offensive line. 230 remaining here in the opening half. Moomy and Smith split out here to the right. Russell's the uh, in to the left. It's a handoff to Everly over the left side. Rumbles his way. Oh, he broke Got tackle. The first down. And he will get brought down at the 38. And that will be a first down for the Wildcats off the seven yard run. That wasn't an actually broke tackle. That was just he just run over that guy. He ran over a couple guys there. So the Wildcats pick up a. Another first down, their seventh. And, you know, Dusty, they have 150 yards rushing so far here tonight. So under two minutes left to play. Wildcats trying to get in the Bobcat territory, get a final score here before the end of the half. Trammell still out of the shotgun. Straight drop back. Throws. Hits Moomy. And I think Moomy dropped it. So bring up second down and 10. That's close to being a football move. Mm -hmm. a minute 42 left here on the stop second quarter clock. Thirty-five to seven is the Giles County lead. As Trammell go out of the shotgun again, two receivers to the left, tight end and a wing to the right. Trammell, handoff here to Clayton. And trying to break tackles, but gets brought down right at the line of scrimmage, and that will bring up third down and 10. Now Giles County is gonna burn its second time out here with Minute 24 remaining. We will take that break with them here on the X Sports Network. Great food is just a short drive to Heine's Barbecue in Lawrenceburg. Mouthwatering is just one way to describe the amazing flavors of the best piece of Heine in town. When you dig into a plate of pulled pork, hand chopped brisket, chicken, wood fire oven pizzas, and the menu goes on. Wash it all down with a swig of Heine Shine Lemonade and then make your way over to the gift shop full of Heine sauces, snacks, and more. Heine's Barbecue, Highway 43 North in Lawrenceburg. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Giles County uses its, its second time out here in the first half. Lawrence County has a third down and actually nine from the Bobcat 39-yard line after an Ian Clayton one-yard pickup. Wildcats so far tonight, one of six on third down. So trying to make something happen here. They have, they do have a 80-yard Ian Clayton touchdown run and have put together a couple decent drives, but penalties and fumbles have not been their No, it's been their hasn't little, been their friend. No, it hasn't. It's kind of been a thorn tonight. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Trammell out of the shotgun, rolls out to his right a bit. He's got Moomy, makes the catch right at the line to gain. And that will be a first down for the Wildcats. And they, yep, that is a first down. So good connection there between Trammell and Moomy. First down and 10. They're going to get on the ball quickly here, Dusty, with a minute left. And got a minute left. Run the play. Same formation here for the Wildcats. Trammell fakes it, and now he's going to roll out to his left. And Trammell's going to get brought down at the 45-yard uh, line. So that's a three-yard loss. 
Comes up second down and 13 with 30 seconds remaining. And now David Marston's going to burn his second time out here of the first half with 17 seconds remaining. We'll just keep it here for the time being with just 17 seconds remaining in the half. Giles County will get the ball out of halftime here. So Orange County's going to have to put together a couple big plays here to get this in scoring position, as they would say in baseball, but not always <laughs> as easy on the football side of things. Yeah, it's always a little different. So Wildcats, after Giles County took a timeout, got it, came out right with it, made the catch on the Trammell to Mumi connection. Looks like they're going to bring in, bring it in a couple hands, new, new receivers. And Silva and Wiley, Logan Clayton is out there as receiver as well. 17 seconds, you can realistically – get definitely two if not maybe three plays out of this just depends on what yes. happens we got two timeouts left or one 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 time out one time out so at least two plays we should get right here look at this we're going three receivers to the right one to the left everly's one of the receivers in this formation haven't seen him do it this year no one in the backfield trammel and he's going to take off he's in the bobcat territory oh, yeah. man miss and he gets very close to the line again, and they're going to give him the first down. So Trammell making a heck of a play in the Bobcat territory. And they're taking forever to, lot, to put the ball down. It's at the 41. And Trammell, three set and snaps it with, spikes it with four seconds left. So this is going to be the final play here of the half. What a play by Jacob Trammell. Man. The pocket closed in on him. He yeah. just steps up and makes a play with his feet. Great job. So 40 on the ball in the Bobcat 41-yard line. With four seconds remaining here in the half. I think you just go get verticals right here and that's what they're doing, two yep. and two. And now David Marston's going to burn his final timeout here with four seconds remaining. So they're going to talk this one over, going to keep it here for the time being. As Lockhart's going to talk this one over. So that was an amazing play there by Jacob Chamble. Really haven't seen a quarterback scramble no. outside of the Alex Carr days from a couple years ago. So that was definitely a good thing. You need something out of your young quarterback. Trammell is a junior, and you want to see something more out of it like that, especially when the pressure comes. Step up, take off, and that was a big gain. And it that was. Could have potentially been more if it wasn't for a good Giles County tackle. It's just good awareness on him to realize that, hey, this is closing in. So the timeout is over. This will be the final play here of the first half. It's, you got Everly and Clayton here to the right. You got Wiley and Silva to the left. And we have a tight end to the right here as well. <laughs> so five wide. Who would have thought it, Dusty? Man, we're going west coast. Trammell now rolling out his left, and he gets his head taken off at the 48-yard line, and that one will end the half. So Giles County, after 24 minutes of play, leads this one 35-7. Coming up on the halftime show, we have a feature on Loretto kicker Patton Simbeck, plus taking a look at UNA's first UAC game, taking on Tarleton State tomorrow. Plus we have a weather report from our good friend Fred Gossage. It's coming up next on the Exports Network. For decades... First Class Charter has provided high quality motor coach transportation services to the Tennessee Valley. With numerous safety and cleanliness accreditations, First Class Charter is ready to make your group trip a reality. Contact us today by visiting firstclasscharter.net. First Class Charter, the official motor coach company of the North Alabama Lions. Don't just find a job, find a career with Resource MFG. 
The team at Resource MFG in Lawrenceburg has the resources and experience to find you a full or part-time position right away. Now recruiting for open positions in Lawrence, Giles, and Murray counties. Whether you're entering the workforce for the first time or looking to take your career to the next level, let your journey begin with Resource MFG. Located at 300 Ellingson Street in Lawrenceburg, phone 931-570-2111 to jumpstart your career today. Hired to drive into the city every time you need appliances, furniture, or heck, just about anything? Next time, stay local and come to Swap and Shop Center. We have everything you want from computers to furniture, major appliances, lawn and garden tools, electronics, you name it. Our number one goal is to get you the items you need at a price you can afford. We even offer 120 days same as cash financing. We won't be undersold. We specialize in service after the sale. We pick up where everyone else leaves off. Swap and Shop Center, family owned and operated in Lawrenceburg for over 61 years. Got primary care? Find your way to better health with primary care by One Stop Medical. With decades of combined experience, you'll find a one-on-one -on -one relationship just like the old days, but with the convenience and technology of today. When One Stop Medical does primary care, it's the best. Call today for an appointment and find your way to healthy living. Serving Lawrenceburg, Pulaski, and Hohenwald. Phone 931-244-8220. Primary care by One Stop Medical at its best. A local law firm respected throughout the state. Generations of clients have turned to Boston, Holt, and Durham since 1948. We assist individuals and businesses with their legal needs, including real estate, property closings, personal injury, employment discrimination, and family law. Our clients get the personal attention and convenience of a hometown law firm with the resources and ability to handle any case. Come see us at Boston, Holt, and Durham. Stuck, then you're in luck. Call Tower McDowell with in-service towing 24 hours a day, seven days a week for quick, reliable service. When you find yourself in a bind, in-service offers full service towing and recovery services as well as vehicle lockouts, jump starts, and emergency roadside assistance. Family owned, family operated. When you need a hand, call in-service towing or ask for them by name. Serving Southern Tennessee and North Alabama. Phone number 931-843-9098 or visit inservicespecialties.com. From the Tennessee Valley Weather Center, this is your local sports forecast. Meteorologist Fred Gossage here in the Tennessee Valley Weather Center with your forecast update tonight. Looking at mostly clear to partly cloudy skies as we head deeper into the overnight, dropping out of the 70s into the 60s this evening. And then morning lows in the upper 50s to lower 60s with mostly clear skies. And it's going to be a comfortable weekend out there for both Saturday and Sunday. Few of us may struggle to hit 80 to 82 degrees for daytime highs. A few clouds around this evening and overnight. Morning lows get down toward the upper 50s to lower 60s as clouds start to thin out. 
out. Then as we head into our Saturday, we still keep this northerly flow around, so a drier low level air mass, but there will be a mix of sun and clouds. A few showers are possible east of I-65. That's off to the east of our viewing area though, daytime highs between the upper 70s and the lower 80s out there, falling back through the 70s into the 60s overnight and morning lows on our Sunday morning in the upper 50s and lower 60s as well. More the same for Sunday with a mix of sun and clouds in that northerly flow, daytime highs staying in the upper 70s and lower 80s. A little warmer from Monday into Tuesday ahead of the next front that brings shower and thunderstorm chances. Few showers and thunderstorms possible Tuesday and Wednesday. And then a reinforcing shot of slightly cooler and drier air for the second half of next week. Check out the temperature trend here. Lower 80s, if not a few upper 70s for the weekend for daytime highs. Morning lows in the upper 50s, lower 60s. Get a little bit warmer for the first part of the week, mid 80s here. But then the front by middle and latter part of the week drops us back into the mid to upper 70s for daytime highs and morning lows by the end of the week into the mid to upper 50s. Your hometown forecast for your Saturday, partly cloudy skies over southern middle Tennessee. Daytime highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s, upper 70s and lower 80s over northwest Alabama and northeast Mississippi, also with partly cloudy skies. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. First thing you're going to notice, no big rain chances on the board, but a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm possible Tuesday and the Wednesday with that next front and then check out temperatures for the second half of next week, mid to upper 70s for daytime highs, despite partly cloudy skies, morning lows on down into the mid to upper 50s. There's a look at your latest seven day forecast. You can always get the latest weather information on the free Tennessee Valley Weather app. You can either scan the QR code there on the screen or search the Apple App Store or Google Play for Tennessee Valley Weather. You can also watch us on our 24-7 all local digital weather channel by searching for Tennessee Valley Weather on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, or YouTube. That's the latest here for, from the Weather Center. Stay tuned for the rest of the game and high school football coverage with AJ Good right here on the Exports Network. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. I had to go to a meeting in the front of 
There are now more ways to save at Quick Mart. Become a Quick Club member and easily earn rewards on qualifying purchases at Quick Mart convenience stores using the Quick Club app. Available on the Apple App Store and Google Play. To save on fuel for work, use the Fuel Rewards Pro app to earn five cents a gallon on work fill-ups and redeem the savings for yourself. To get started, visit fuelrewards.com slash pro or download the app in the Apple App Store and Google Play. Southern Craft Manufacturing is dedicated to creating the finest quality and greatest value products in the death care industry. Southern Craft has perfected blending old world craftsmanship with modern manufacturing technologies to create a full line of steel, wood, and corrugated caskets. Family owned and operated for over 30 years, Southern Craft is now looking to hire local and regional truck drivers, welders, and production workers, each with great starting pay and a benefits package. For more information, visit southerncraftmfg.com. Renright Equipment has all the tools you need to get the job done. From bobcats to trenchers to augers to lifts, we have a large variety of equipment for every project, big or small. Need a new mower? We have you covered there too. With great brands Hustler and Big Dog, Renright is ready to serve all your equipment needs. Call today and reserve your equipment from Renright Equipment in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Hi, my name is Asha. I go to Lawrenceburg Technical College and I moved here a year ago from California. I wanted to be a cosmetologist and study hair, nails, and makeup. You should come join us at Lawrenceburg Technical College and learn all about cosmetology. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. currently working to raise funds to purchase new uniforms. We need to raise $60,000 to purchase new uniforms. If you or any business would like to help by making a donation, please see Mr. Boston. We hope you enjoy our performance. Please make welcome your Lawrence County High School Band.
Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Welcome here to the halftime show, getting you ready for the second half of all the games here on the X Sports Network. Now, there is a local star over at Loretto that's doing big things, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Pat Simbeck is a two sports star for the Mustangs, but it's his charitable contributions that are starting to get noticed. Patton Simbeck has been an integral part of the Mustang football team for the past few seasons as the kicker, a role he cherishes. I mean, it's pretty fun. There's its uh, ups and downs. You know, everybody loves you if you make it. Everybody hates you if you miss it. But uh, I like it. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. 2023 has been fun for Simbeck with the offense putting up plenty of points, keeping him busy. That's what, joking, last game, I got pretty tired after the first quarter, second half. Uh, it keeps me busy. It keeps everybody else busy. Our defense is doing a pretty good job of getting on the field and getting back off, and the offense go right back out there. So I like to keep it going that way. Simbeck was also a big part of the Mustang soccer team this past fall that made plenty of history. At the start of the season, we just progressively got better game after game, and practice was a lot more detailed than it had been before. And we just kind of took what we had where we ended with last year and then kept it going into the following season. And took it right into district championship and region runner-up. Patton is kicking this season to find a cure for type 1 diabetes where you can donate a specific dollar amount for every point he scores. I went to a kicking camp in the summer and they did it for a childhood cancer and that was the original plan was to come back and do what they did. Uh, the way they did it was just kind of like you know an extra point, one point, somebody donate a dollar for every point. Uh, after talking to my family we decided to do it for diabetes since I've had diabetes since I was three going on 15 and a half years now. Uh, so I kind of took it in my own hands for a way to raise money for pediatric diabetes. So far the community has stepped up big, something that Simbeck is grateful for. It's it's wonderful. Uh, we've raised quite a bit of money just through three games, going on four now. Uh, every game there's more and more people donating and a lot of people I, I don't even know who they are. Uh, so I appreciate that. Just hope to keep raising more money. Coming up next, we head on over to college football where UNA gets ready for its first game in the UAC. Story and Lee, the Tennessee Valley's most dynamic furniture store. Featuring our Made in America galleries with solid wood dining and bedrooms, leather furniture, mattresses, and so much more. You want it? We've got it. With our three acres of showroom and our huge warehouse, we're sure to have exactly what you want. And it's all ready to be delivered to your home absolutely free. Just try that anywhere else. We are Story and Lee. Southern Craft Manufacturing is dedicated to creating the finest quality and greatest value products in the death care industry. Southern Craft has perfected blending old world craftsmanship with modern manufacturing technologies to create a full line of steel, wood, and corrugated caskets. Family owned and operated for over 30 years, Southern Craft is now looking to hire local and regional truck drivers, welders, and production workers, each with great starting pay and a benefits package. For more information, visit southerncraftmfg.com. At Southern Tennessee Realty in Lawrenceburg, owner and broker Fred Webb is always working with his realtors to ensure they're ready for game day to score you the biggest win for your home or property. From being the best trained to knowing the land or home they're selling, the crew at your local United Country office is ready to give you their all. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, turn to Southern Tennessee Realty today and let them put their years of combined experience to work for you because everyone around here knows if Southern Tennessee Realty can find Bigfoot, they can find you a buyer. Great food is just a short drive to Heine's Barbecue in Lawrenceburg. Mouthwatering is just one way to describe the amazing flavors of the best piece of Heine in town when you dig into a plate of pulled pork, hand-chopped brisket, chicken, wood-fire oven pizzas, and the menu goes on. Wash it all down with a swig of Heine Shine Lemonade and then make your way over to the gift shop full of Heine sauces, snacks, and more. Heine's Barbecue, Highway 43 North in Lawrenceburg. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. 
Welcome back to the Halftime Show. Now switching things over to college football where North Alabama is coming off its first win of the 2023 season and the first win under new head coach Brent Deerman. But this week is going to bring a totally different set of challenges as they will have their first UAC game on the road at Tarleton State. Over in Florence, where it will be week two of the college football season, but the Lions will be preparing for game number three. This time, it will be their first true road game as they head to Tarleton State to start UAC play. This past Saturday, the Lions were able to break out the offense in the win over Chattanooga. They had over 500 yards and scored 41 points, something head coach Brent Deerman wants to see more often. We strive for 10, 15-yard gains or more. I think we ended up with 12. Uh, if you add uh, Dakota Warfield's touchdown, which is outside of 15, but it was a pretty explosive play, in my opinion. You were up to 13 plays. Uh, but TK Big Day, Noah pl played uh, his tail off, uh, gave us a chance to win that football game. Uh, something we really challenged him is he can't just be a, uh, a game manager. That's what, not what we require of our quarterbacks. We need you to win the ball game for us, and he did that for us. Um, you know, another one you mentioned, J.D. J.D., I think, right now is leading the country in yards per carry. Um, he's an explosive back. He's a home run back. He's becoming more of a complete running back. Um, we challenge him not to just to be a speed sweep guy. And then another one that, that you left out there is Marcus Lacey. Marcus Lacey had over 100 yards all purpose between uh, rushing and receiving. Made a couple of big catches for us, uh, ran the ball really well, um, and picked up a few blitzes even in pass pro for a guy that was a receiver last year, picking up a Mike Blitz in the A-gap pretty difficult to do. So uh, then our line played a lot better than they did last week. So there's so many different guys that stepped up. That will do it here for the Halftime Show. Kickoff for the second half is just a few minutes away, and don't forget to check out all the highlights going down tonight on the final score. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. And back here at Lawrence County, is getting ready to start the second half. Giles County leading the Wildcats 35-7. to Taking a look here at the first half stats, starting first with the Wildcats. On 31 plays, they had 166 yards. On the other side for Giles County, they had 26 plays for 287 yards. Leaders for the Wildcat team, Clayton. Five carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown. Latavion Everly, nine carries and 56 yards. Passing-wise, Jaden Trammell, 7 of 12 for 16. On the other side for Giles County, Kamari Turner, 12 carries, 206 yards, two scores. Zori Randolph, 9 carries for 43 yards and two scores. So the stats kind of tell the story so far here in the first half of this one, Dusty, and the Bobcats will get the ball here to start the second half. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot good to say about the Lawrence County where they've been performing, A.J. We've, you know, we've... Missed tackles. We missed a bunch of tackles. Um, you know, uh, Ian has run the ball well. So has Tay. You know, Isaiah went down hurt. But our guys have not done anything to stop this rushing attack of Giles County. And the score shows it. And you got to think, they had two called back, and so did we. But they had two other touchdowns they could have scored. I just um, – I hope they went in the locker room and they really had a little gut check here. And let's see what happens in the second half. Justice Hughes on to kick it away. And Turner and Randolph back deep to return. And this is a squib kick, and that one's fielded. And either about the 38 or 37 yard line. And that's where they'll take over first down and 10. And if they want to call it at the 37. So that's where the Bobcats will have it. 30 seconds, and we'll call it at the 36. So their second worst starting field position here in the game. And they have scored on all five possessions so far in this one. Uh, come on. Actually, it's Johnny Jackson that will bring the offense back on the field. Kamari Turner has been the, he's gotten the bulk of the action at quarterback so far tonight. Now Jackson, who's been their normal starting quarterback, getting the action here. It's a handoff to Randolph. And he's across the 40 to 45 and will dive over the first down. And they're going to mark him at the 47 for the first down. As Jackson will stay a quarterback. Turner will now go to wide receiver. Jackson here 
Now going to call his own number. Oh, he He's in the Wildcat territory. He's got a lot of room. Cuts up field, breaks the tackle, feet. and he is going to take this one into the end zone. So didn't play in the first half and comes out here right after that. Goes right down the field, and the Bobcats lead at 41-7. to So Jackson comes in and makes quick work on a two-play 64-yard drive. Cardin on to attempt the extra point. And the snap is back. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 11-26 remaining in the third quarter. Wildcats trail Giles County 42-7 at the first Lawrence County drive of the second half. We return on the Exports Network. Whether you're looking to spruce up the interior or exterior of your home or business, trust Lawrenceburg Glass to provide a one-of-a-kind product. From windows to mirrors, shower doors, custom framing, storefront installations, and everything in between, Lawrenceburg Glass takes pride in our quality craftsmanship and strong attention to detail. With us, your customer experience always exceeds expectations. We're reliable, on time, and we deliver stunning results. Lawrenceburg Glass. Our passion is reflected in our work. Being raised in Tennessee, we believe in the importance of family and community. Creating a positive experience in our family-owned and operated business is one of the ways we share that belief. Being in an accident can be extremely stressful. When it came time for my repairs, Mashburn's made it easy. I am lucky to have a wonderful company in my community like Mashburn's Collision Center. It's reassuring to know that I'm in good hands because their work is second to none. We pride ourselves that the Mashburn name is one of the most trusted in Lawrence County since 1981. Mashburn's Collision Center. Let our family take care of yours. Cardin on to kick it away after Jackson's 53-yard touchdown run makes it 42 to seven. This one's actually a look. I don't. Know, I guess they were trying an onside oh. kick or a miss hit, but it goes out of bounds. And Wildcats will take over, I believe, in their own territory. So they're going to mark it here at. The Bobcat 40. What? <laughs> well, at least we got some good field position to start out on. So they will take over first down and 10 here. Trammell now out of the shotgun. And it's going to be a handoff to Clayton. Clayton's going to get around He's the edge at 40-35, and we'll take it down to the 33-yard line. A seven-yard pickup brings up second down and three. So good and run there on first down from Clayton as they're going to get back on the ball here quickly. Yeah, Lawrence County needs to go hurry up right here. Trammell's got Everly here out of the shotgun. It's a handoff to Latavian over the right side. He's got some room. And stiff arms a man very close to the line again. They're going to mark him at the 31. This can bring up third down and one. Now, Dusty, they've really been working the edges so far in this game. That's been their success. Um especially against this Giles County front. They're, uh, it doesn't look like our guys are getting a push that we've been getting. It's a third down and a long one here for the Wildcats. 15 seconds here left on the play clock. They're gonna, offensive line hurried on the ball. Silva's alone split out here to the left. Motion from Clayton and a Hand off to Everly, and he got stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go. We'll bring up fourth down and one. Nowhere to run, and the Wildcats will go for it here. 0 for 1 on the previous fourth down attempt. That was a fourth down along from deep in Bobcat territory. 9.20 remaining here in the third quarter. Trammell will go under center. 
Now they're going to flip the formation, and now David Marston's going to call his first time out here with 9.03 remaining in the third quarter. And we will take that break with them on the Exports Network. Are you looking for the perfect refrigerator? What about a new stove or washer or dryer? It only makes sense to shop at the one place that specializes in appliances, top to bottom, big or small. And that's Kelly Appliance in Lawrenceburg. Kelly Appliance is home to all major name brands, including LG. LG makes life good with a full selection of refrigerators, cooking appliances, dishwashers, microwaves, and more, including appliances made right here in Tennessee. Family owned and family operated. Stop by Kelly Appliance on Jerry Street in Lawrenceburg today. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. And back here, Lawrence County going to go for it on fourth down and one. Trailing Giles County, 42 to 7, 9 and 3 remaining in the third quarter. Update from over at Summertown, Loretto, leading the Eagles 21 to nothing. Three minutes remaining there in the third quarter. Lawrence County here going to flip the formation. And now a false start is called against Lawrence County. So that will take him five yards backwards, bring up a fourth down and six. It's the fourth penalty against the Wildcats for 45 yards. So goes from a fourth and one now to a fourth and six. Get back on the ball, 8.35 remaining. Clayton in motion, he'll get the handoff. He does have some room. He's gonna cut upfield, he'll get the first down and more. No penalty flags brought down at the 26 yard line and the Wildcats pick up their first fourth down conversion of the game on the 10 yard run from Ian Clayton. Well, they must have picked your flag up. I didn't see a flag. Did you I see I thought a flag? you said penalty. No, I said no penalty flag. Oh, I'm sorry. Trammell still out of the shotgun. Everly to his right. Clayton's one of the wings. And now it's a toss out to Everly over the right side. And nowhere to go. He is stacked up at the... 29 yard line, three yard loss, and that will bring up second down and 13. The Wildcats now behind the sticks here on second down. I believe Dusty, we do have a rolling fourth quarter clock here with a 30 point, 35 point lead. Anything above 30 in the second half is a rolling clock. Trammell, straight drop back, and he's going to go long. Going for Silva, and just out of reach. Ball was actually thrown out of bounds, about a, about a couple yards out of bounds, and that will bring up third down and 13. Yeah, they're just trying to find something to get some positive yards. Give all the credit to this Giles County team. Man, they are I, I don't take anything away from Very good, very tough. And getting any sort of yards or... I mean, Lawrence County has moved the ball. They have. They have made some plays. They've, they've had some success. They've converted in some situations. Third down and 13 now, under 10 seconds left on the play clock. Now five. Is Trammell still out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, and he's going to get brought down at the 39. Actually going to call him at the 41, another sack against Clayton. Or against Trammell, excuse me. And that will bring up fourth down here for the Wildcats. Actually, they do call it at the 39. So, decision time here for the Wildcats. Looks like they're going to go for it. Why not? As we're past the halfway point here on a rolling second half clock here in the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to try to get some kind of positive 
It'll be fourth down and 23 here for the Wildcats. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Russell to Trammell's left here out of the shotgun. And the whistle blows. And a delay, delay of game. game called against the Wildcats. Delay of game against the Wildcats. Now it takes the ball back to the 44-yard line for fourth and 28. Buck now five minutes here in the third quarter. So they break the huddle. Ten seconds left now on the play clock. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Trammell straight drop back. Well, throw it up. And it looked like he catch not, it. And they said he didn't make the catch. So that will fall incomplete. And the Bobcats will take over first down and 10 from their own 44. Amaya Odin. Please come to the press box. Somebody has turned something in. So the Bobcat offense will come back on the field. Scored, had six possessions, have scored all six times. They will head back on for the seventh time in the game. Be Jackson again, who had the 53-yard touchdown run on the previous possession. Mine's a big kid. Left-hander as well. Flip the formation. They're going to go five wide here. Jackson just going to call his own number. Has a lot of room to run. He'll get the first down and go out of bounds at the 42. First down, Bobcats. Another first down for the Bobcats. They're 16th in the game. Marked them out at the 44, actually. Bobcats staying in the no huddle. Clock still rolling with a 35 point lead. Jackson straight drop back, throws, and he hits Brian, his intended receiver. He's, He's across the 40, 35, 30, and eventually steps out of bounds. They say at the 30-yard line. His first catch off the 14-yard first down play. Clock now under three minutes in the third quarter. Jackson, now a handoff to Randolph. And he will take it down. And they said he fumbled. Oh, fumbled it. Lawrence County has the ball. Yes. And the Wildcats come well, away they with did. it. They'll have it. Forced the fumble. First and down to him from their own 26. So a break here for the Wildcats. Cade Brown on the recovery, and they'll take over first down and 10. Clock is still under two minutes here, still rolling because of the 35-point lead. So a good turnover here forced by the Wildcat defense. will bring the offense back yes. on the field. Trammell is a new running back. Looks like that's Pettigrew behind him. Clayton goes in motion. And Pettigrew gets the carry. He cuts up field and gets brought down at the 35-yard line. Well, he comes in and uh, he comes in and he <laughs> comes in with a, a rush. He run real hard against us in the Summertown JV game. I called AJ. And he he dominated from the line of scrimmage. Good work there from the offensive line yes. as well, giving them a hole, hole to work with. Gonna, they've been out of the shotgun primarily pretty much since the second they quarter have. here, Dusty. Yeah. That's a handoff to Pettigrew again. He gets it barely across the 35. They will give him forward progress to the 36, which should be enough for the first down. And it will be, so the Wildcats will move the ball in the first down and 10. 
So let's score the first down for the Wildcats. So Pettigrew comes in, two carries for 10 yards, and the Wildcats are moving the sticks. Play in. Go to 12 on the play clock. Be final play here of the third quarter. Trammell under center now. Motion from Elijah Young to hand off to Clayton up the middle. And he will rumble his way down to the 37 yard line. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. After three quarters of play, Giles County leads at 42 to seven while well, the start of the fourth quarter when we return here on the X Sports Network. McMaster's Home Gallery, where you'll always get a special price every day. Shop their new showroom full of name brand furniture, sofas, recliners, dining and bedroom suits, Serta bedding, lots of tables and chairs just to match your decor. McMaster's Home Gallery also has GE appliances. Stop by on Highway 43 in Loretto or call 853-6140. Like you, our roads are in Lawrence County, providing banking for every stage of life since 1934. Lawrenceburg Federal Bank has been not just your bank, but also your friend, helping you with home loans, consumer and auto loans, and your everyday personal banking needs. Lawrenceburg Federal offers you a warm smile and personal experience, as well as the conveniences of modern-day online banking, mobile banking, and telebanking. Lawrenceburg Federal Bank, your neighbor and friend, located at 118 West Gain Street, next to the courthouse. Flooring sets the tone throughout your home. For flooring that makes the right first impression, start by choosing us, Floored by Justin. A one-stop flooring destination. Our new location stands alone for unequaled customer service and selection. Owner Justin Story's mastery of custom hardwood inlays means every room can have a custom look. Discover how the right choice of hardwood, laminate, carpet, or tile can set the tone in your home. Contact Floor. And back here as we start the fourth quarter, Trammell rolls out and his pass is going to be caught there by Silva at the 44-yard uh, line, a seven-yard completion. We'll bring up a third down and two here for the Wildcats. Some score updates. Moore County defeats Wayne County 40 to nothing. Collinwood is leading Eagleville 25 to nothing right now in the third quarter. Loretto leading Summertown 28 to nothing in the fourth. And Harpeth is actually leading Mount Pleasant 10 to eight in the fourth quarter right now. So that one is a bit of a surprise. It's Trammell's throw. It's Silva again, and he is across Bobcat territory and a, another first down. I'm liking this. Uh, we're starting to see some something a little different yeah. here. Starting to see the ball moving. They're getting some connection. Trammell's getting in a rhythm here. I'm. Oh, I'm sorry, Dustin. Are you I'm liking what I'm seeing here? Do have some. Still have the same offensive line in the game, but we're breaking out some newer receivers, some newer backs, but Everly back in the game. 10.45 remaining in the game. Russell will go in motion. It's a handoff to Everly. And not much running room as he'll go down to the 48-yard line. Bring it up second down and eight. Take Bedford there on the stop. I think we throw it again, AJ. Just yeah, something, they've, something they've different. Had some success here. We have. Trammell is nine of sixteen, just for thirty yards. But you know the last couple ones have gone for first downs here for Lawrence County. They like working out of this shotgun. Trammell straight drop back this time. He's going to throw it deep, and he's got Smith and oh. overthrows him, and that one falls incomplete. Third down. Bring up third down and eight here for Lawrence County. Clock does not stop here in the fourth quarter because of the 35 point leads. We go to 9.45 remaining in the game. Wildcats here facing another third down situation. So far they are three of 10 on the down and one of three on fourth down. 10 seconds left on the play clock as they'll flip the formation. It's Silva and Wiley at the wideout position. 
Trammell now rolls out a bit to his right, throws, and uh, Silva makes the catch, and that's going to move the sticks for another first down. So Trammell to Silva is working, and that will move the sticks again for Lawrence County. Wildcats will be back here next week as they take on Columbia, another region game. Columbia came in at came in tonight at 2 and 1. They are hosting Shelbyville at Franklin County at Tullahoma. And that one's pretty close in Lincoln County at Spring Hill. Trammell out of the shotgun again. We'll throw it out to Wiley. Wiley makes his first catch of the season, makes a man miss, and they're going to bring him down at the 24 yard line. Good so catch Wiley, and run. Yeah, Wiley making a play. Excuse me, the 34 yard line. My, my apologies. And we have a officials timeout. We have We've injured got player in, down for injured Josh Bob, County. Injured Bobcat on the play. And while they tend to him, we will take a break on the Exports Network. Employee Resources Credit Union is an easy solution to banking, offering a personal, simple, yet modern way to bank. When you bank with ERCU, you are a shareholder, meaning you own a piece of the pie. And we make it easy with the convenience of digital banking, with service you won't find at another financial institution, including low to zero fees and incredible rates. We have the technology you need with the personal service you deserve, right here in your own neighborhood. Employee Resources Credit Union, not for profit, for service. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. Ninja Bob Kev is able to make his way off the field okay. It's Lawrence County here with a second down and five at the Bobcat 34. Trammell out of the shotgun. It's a handoff to Everly. Everly's going to take it across the corner and gets his way across the 30 yeah, down the 29. Everly. And that will be enough for a Wildcat first now. So the Wildcats so far in this one have been able to run for 172 yards on 30 carries. And 7.40 remaining now on a rolling fourth quarter clock. Wildcats will flip the formation here. Pretty much staying in the same formation, just flipping yeah. it from right to left. Trammell and... And they, that was supposed to be a reverse. Yes. And that Bobcat just ripped it out of his hand. Dallas Buckner makes the play. And a second turnover of the game for the Wildcats. And Giles County will take over first down to 10 with 7-10 remaining. They'll have it at the their own 33. That was an attempted reverse, and he just ripped it out of his hand. So the Wildcats, their third turnover at the season, ends another promising drive. Yeah, and just unfortunate tonight. Things just hadn't went their way. So it looks like we're going to get a lot of second teamers into the game, not only for Lawrence County, but for Giles County as well, as their offense hasn't even made the field yet. And it looks like they're just going to take and call it. I don't, either they know it or they don't know it. And they don't know it. <laughs> and now they call a timeout. It'll be their first timeout here of the second half with 6-10 remaining in the game. We will take that break as well on the Exports Network. Are you looking for a non-factory job environment? Livingstone Freight Solutions is a 3PO company that began managing warehouses in Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi. With our multiple shifts and experienced management team, our goal is to give you as an employee a safe family work environment and competitive wages. We offer a wide variety of employment opportunities from forklift drivers to management level positions. We also strive to offer a competitive benefit package and PTO options. For more information or to apply, visit us at livingstonefs.com or give us a call at 931-269-3255. 
dent, a ding, a scratch, or a bent fender, major or minor, Car Country Collision Center in Leoma can fix you up. Car Country works with all insurance carriers, gives free estimates, can work on foreign and domestic vehicles, and has experience you can trust. They've been in business since 1990. Unfortunately, accidents happen, but you can get your car back on the road with as little hassle as possible with the help of Car Country. Call 931-852-4708 or stop by at 2567 Highway 43 South in Leoma. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. 609 remaining in the game as Giles County leads 42 to 7. 609 here in the fourth quarter as Giles County just burned their first timeout. Took a new offense into the game, and right off the get go, he gets stacked up at the 29 yard line, nowhere to go. That was a hit. That was a pretty, that was a big loss as well. Man, uh, yeah. So they bring up second down and 13. Very big hit. Looks like that was the 36. Gage Moses that made the play there. Under six minutes left to play in this one, this rolling fourth quarter clock. Hard to make out who the new quarterback is. It's kind of hard to read these numbers. Yeah. Uh, it's called him Randolph. Randolph, over here, yep. Heard. Xavier Randolph and a quick play out now to the left on a quick screen. Making the catch there was Cooper White. It's Xavier Randolph, freshman quarterback. White gets it to the 31. That'll bring up third down and 12. With five minutes left to play. Ten seconds now on the play clock. Bobcats just now breaking the huddle. Have to get up and snap it quick. And they might not get this playoff in time. No. And they won't. It will be a delay of game here. Now we'll move him backwards five yards and that will make it third and extra long. Third and 17. Randolph here out of the shotgun. Straight drop back. Right-hander is gonna get sacked. Host of Wildcats there on the play, Thomas Carr. One of the first guys in there, he's gonna come away with the sack and he gets brought down at the 20 yard line and for the first time tonight, the Bobcat punt unit will come on the field. Well, we know he can kick it. Yep, it's Carden will be the punter. Smith Wiley back deep to return. Got his heels on his own 33 yard line. And they're going to, looks like they're waiting on a late substitution. Five seconds left on the play clock. They'll get it off in time. And he's going to take off. He is off to the races. He's got a lot of room. He's into. <laughs> He Wildcat is. territory, and he gets taken out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So that's a first down for the Bobcats. So the Bobcats will stay on the field with under three minutes left to play. Actually, he said he ran, went out of bounds at the 43. But it's still oh, enough good. for that a first down. first down. Under three minutes left to play in this one. Two thirty now remaining is Randolph will go under center and hands up up the middle and. It's stacked up. He actually made a host of Wildcats <laughs> miss and eventually got stacked up. On the stop for Lawrence County is Jake Bradley, the junior. Makes a stop and bring up second down and 10 here with Giles County with 2.05 remaining. 
more than likely here they will. This will probably just run the clock all the way down. Run the clock all the way down. Not the end of the season here for Lawrence County no. as they'll drop the two and two again. It's not a region game, so ultimately doesn't hurt them when it comes to postseason aspirations. Again, and when you look at the region, they're two and one. They're about to be two and two. Columbia's two and one. Shelbyville two and one. Tullahoma two and one. Spring Hill one and two. And Lincoln one and two. Franklin zero oh and three. Now we, Giles County will call a timeout with a minute 32 remaining. We'll just keep it here for the time being. This will probably be a short timeout before Giles County will head back on the field. Second teamers now in for both sides. Get a look here at the future Wildcats and a look at the future Bobcats for the time being as this series is now renewed as Giles County will even it up at 33, 33, and two. two. So it's rare, right, Dusty, when you come across a rivalry that is, even though we've discussed it in pregame, it's one team will go on a run, another team will go yes. on a run. and But um, it's just certainly on the college side, you don't get a lot of that no. even rivalry. No, a lot of times it's just one-sided for the most part. So Giles County will improve to two and two as well, and they will head back into region play next week. Lawrence County, well, again, will be here for Columbia. Then we'll go on the road back-to-back -back games against Spring Hill and Tullahoma. Not terrible drives when it, as far as that goes, and their final road game will be at Cheatham County. They'll have Shelbyville and Franklin County here at home as well. Hand off, and he's stacked he's up at stacked the 44-yard line. Nowhere to go. Host of Wildcats there on the play it was Bradley. First guy to get there, along with Gage Moses. Moses, who also has a sack so far in this one. So the second teamers, the young cats, are showing out here. Again, time here in the JV game, or, or the JV portion of the game. Yeah, the I JV portion, say. yeah. And now Randolph will roll out to his left and facing some pressure and he gets stacked up at the 42, nowhere to go. Good job there by Austin Capron and Gage Bivens on the stop. 45 seconds remaining. This is probably gonna be the last play of the game right here. And Bobcats will keep the offense here on the field. Crowd has stayed around. Yeah. Ten seconds left, and Randolph is a handoff up the middle, and he's going to get the first down to the 32-yard line, and that will be the final play of the game. As final score, Giles County will get the cowbell back as they win this one 42-7. They improve to 2-2 two two overall, and Lawrence County drops to 2-2 two two overall. Dusty, final thoughts here on tonight's game as we wrap it up and uh, get ready for next week. AJ, I don't have a whole lot to say right here. It wasn't really, I mean, missed tackles, uh, penalties. How many times we talk about had it in the red zone or on their side of the field, good field position, we fumble or bad penalties back us up. So, Lord, hey, Wildcats are going to have to come to practice, you know, starting this coming week, and they're going to have to get ready because Columbia's not going to come in here and lay down either. Another rivalry game that will be renewed next week right here at Hendricks Stag Stadium. Kickoff at 7 o'clock, and we will have coverage here on the X Sports Network. So for Dusty Kaiser, for producer extraordinaire Kevin Wright, this is AJ Good here on the X Sports Network. We will see you guys next week. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network.